Hey everyone, for our COVID-19 in VR series, we're going to be exploring some of the drugs that Escalate for COVID has been using supercomputers and Nanome to find drugs that they could repurpose to help fight COVID-19. Uh, what we see here is raloxifene, which is you know, one of the drugs that the consortium has found that actually shows some pretty good potency, uh, you know, experimentally and computationally, that it could potentially inhibit COVID-19. So we're going to be going through some of the papers that are out there related to this molecule, uh, related to some of the proteins that we've already been exploring, as well as some new proteins that are out there with COVID-19 as well. Yeah, and before we jump in, Steve, why don't we take a look at this molecule, this raloxifene. So this, this molecule is a selective estrogen receptor modulator. So in the body, it binds normally to the estrogen receptor, but unlike natural estrogen such as estradiol this one can be both an agonist in some tissues or an antagonist in other tissues so in bone it's an agonist and helps build bone and protects against osteoporosis so it, it's given to postmenopausal women whose estradiol levels are, are lower but it's also been found in the breast and uterus it can block the function of, of estradiol. And so it's used to treat breast cancer as well. So it's a really fascinating drug. I saw that in 2017 in the US alone, there were 900,000 prescriptions for raloxifene. It's now a generic medicine, Steve, uh, inexpensive medicine for people. So if it does work for COVID-19, it would be a, a great breakthrough. And, and, and Mike, there's been some, um, I, I guess, uh, you know, information out there saying that maybe men are more affected, uh, you know, by COVID-19 um, than women are. And, and so this is very interesting uh, that there is this, you know, estrogen receptor modulator um, you know, that we're looking at that could potentially be related to COVID-19. So, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to, to check this out as a potential treatment. Um, the, I don't know what the side effects would be for, um, you know, men and women both taking this. Uh, they wouldn't typically be in the age range or group that would normally be taking this type of medicine. Um, but if it helps fight COVID-19, like you said, it's a generic drug. It's generally available. It's pretty cheap. Um, so if it ends up you know, helping fight COVID-19 and actually attacking the virus server, um, yeah, that would be awesome. So let's go ahead and explore a little bit about what's going on in the research and, and see if we can make sense of how this interacts with the coronavirus. Yeah, and you make a great point, Steve. It's actually been tested in men for multiple months for uh, osteoporosis and also looking at effects on gynecomastia. So uh, where men, for instance, grow breast tissue. Uh, and so this could possibly help for that. It's not approved for those indications in men and more studies would be needed. Uh, but there is the question of, you know, maybe it would be safe. I think for people with COVID-19 who have uh, various uh, cardiovascular or a uh, blood side effects, uh, this could also be a risk potentially. So again, there's important research that would need to be done. But yeah, let's let's look at it and see uh, for COVID-19, it's not thought that it works through binding to the estrogen receptor, but that it actually could bind to proteins of the coronavirus. Well, cool. and you know, like all the papers that are out there, uh, don't try this at home. Um, you know, if a doctor ends up prescribing this to you, that, that could be interesting. Uh, it's gonna be up to their judgment, depending on your medical conditions and what medication you might already be taking. Um, but let's go ahead and, and explore how this might help. And you know, maybe uh, we'll end up seeing this prescribed in the, in the hospitals or at least in the clinic sometime in the near future. Yeah, so, so there's a couple papers out there that hypothesize how this might be working for COVID-19. And so we can talk about a couple of them. And one is a paper that came out recently by Duarte and co-workers from uh, Cornell Wheel and King's College. And they suggest through their docking that this could be an inhibitor of both the RNA polymerase protein or the main protease protein, that it could be either or both. So why don't we start with one of those, Steve? Yeah, yeah, sounds great. So uh, this is going to be a familiar protein to our audience over here. So this is actually the main protease. Uh, we've looked at it before. Um, yeah, there's been several different ligands bound in, in this uh, you know, active region of the protease. Um, yeah, we've seen more ligand-like molecules. We've seen uh, artificial intelligent 
generated molecules based on uh, scaffolding techniques. Um, you, those sound great, uh, but one of the problems with new drugs is that it takes a while to understand if it's going to harm people more than it helps people. Uh, but the cool thing about raloxifene is that it's already on the market, and we know that it, you know, it, it's safe enough to, to take for people. So if there is any indication that it does interact with you know, this protease over here, and you, know, you could show that computationally a little bit like in the studies, um, yeah, this could be a, a really promising medication there because it already is available. It doesn't hurt people and it could be available for pretty cheap. Yeah, so that's really yeah. exciting, Steve. And I think, uh, you know, it, it was found through a docking procedure or, or it was shown through a docking procedure to suggest it could inhibit this protein. So maybe we should do some docking too. Yeah, um, so... I uh, just ran the docking, and so we could see that in the uh, the docking menu. So yeah, we, we could see the uh, the lowest confirmation here of negative 6.9 kilocal per mole. And this is actually on the original molecule that was in here on the crystallized uh, protein ligand confirmation. Uh, this isn't the raloxifene. So the lowest energy state for raloxifene is going to be this one. Which in all the others, you know, we see that this part is actually sticking into the protein and that actually generates a lower energy, a therefore better uh, binding fit. And in this way, it has you know, this side sticking in, which uh, doesn't really make as, as much sense as some of the other confirmations that had uh, that other part in there. So if we look at uh, the highest energy, it's going to be the opposite there where we see that we have this part actually in the binding spot and then we have the uh, area with the nitrogen actually sticking out. And these are gonna be the top few. So this is negative 9.1 kilocal per mole. Uh, this is our number two spot, uh, negative 8.6. And really the only difference is that this is just flipped up or down. And uh, chances are it's gonna be, you know, sort of moving uh, anyways, and that these are both probably pretty valid states that it would be in. Steve, if you go back to the best one, the the lowest energy confirmation of minus nine point one, yep, we can we can see some hydrogen bonds that are possible from the phenol up here and the phenol down here that uh, you know could be very good interactions. And then through the the middle of the structure where uh, the protein is more hydrophobic, uh, this hydrophobic part of raloxifene fits very well. So from phenol tip to phenol tip, it's a really good fit. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting um, fit that it has and that yeah, this part kind of sticking out of the pocket might have been pushed away the dimer interface. Um, we'll, have to, we'll have to see that. So yeah, do you want to move on and uh, check out some of the other proteins that raloxifene might also interact with? Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah um, so this is a, another protein that we've analyzed on our COVID and VR series before. It's the RNA polymerase. And so this uh, RNA polymerase is actually showing another drug that we've covered, remdesivir. And so what remdesivir does is it's an RNA analog, so it's very similar to an RNA-based pair. And it will actually um, bind with the rest of the RNA sequence here and really block replication of the viral RNA. Yeah, so it's a really cool inhibitor. And I think it's interesting that in the paper by Duarte and co-workers, they find that raloxifene may be a good inhibitor of the RNA polymerase. But I think the question for us, Steve, is where might it bind to RNA polymerase? Yeah, so uh, I, I think that um, you know, figuring out which part of the polymerase it binds to um, is going to probably require a bit more processing time. So maybe we'll do a follow-up on that and do a, instead of a site-specific binding, uh, you know, a virtual docking, we'll go ahead and do a non-site specific. So instead of specifying that we only want it to look here, um, we'll actually have it go across the entire protein and find a spot where it binds because it you know, might be some allosteric interaction where it binds on a different part of the protein that ends up changing some of the activity. So thanks everyone for checking out this COVID-19 in VR series on raloxifene. Uh, stay tuned, we're gonna be yeah, researching the latest papers and really trying to present this information in a way that makes sense using virtual reality. And Mike, yeah, thanks so much for joining again and you know, lending your expert knowledge on medicinal chemistry.
Thanks, Steve. It was fun today. Thanks, everyone. Cool. Thanks a lot, everyone.